Killer Crew presents. Nineteen ninety two was a good year for fans of Footy Manager games. In that year, the two franchises that would go on to dominate the genre for the next decade debuted. One of them was, of course, the Almighty Championship Manager, and the other is the subject of this video Premier Manager. The story of Premier Manager starts with Gremlin Graphics producer Tony Casson receiving an unsolicited demo of a manager game in the mail. In an interview on the Gremlin archives, he recalls putting the disc in his computer not knowing what it was and discovering a management game, a genre he loved. He found a game that was simple and accessible, yet had depth. The person behind the game on Casson's disc was John Atkinson. Mr. Atkinson had previously worked for DNH and created some well-known games like Multiplayer Soccer Manager. The UI resemblance is pretty obvious. He brought artist Alex Kevin with him from GNH, and they would work together as Realms of Fantasy on the first three games in the Premier Manager series. The Premier Manager game boxes are some of my favorite boxes of all. I love how Gremlin kept the style of the boxes similar but not exactly the same. It's easy to see they are part of the same series. The copy protection for all three games are these cold wheels. There is something pleasing to me about the aesthetics of these, especially the first one with the kits, but they are kind of annoying to use. The first game in the series puts you in charge of a team in the Vauxhall Conference, the fifth tier of English football at the time. You don't get a say in the matter, you have to start at the bottom in the first three Premier Manager games. You get to pick your team though and set off on a journey towards the top. This game is simple but challenging, and has some nice depth to it. In the conference you're always short on cash and have to work to sign sponsors to get enough cash to be able to improve your squad. Balancing the squad is a chore, with the game handing out injuries left and right, but you can find some gems among the part-timers in the transfer market. Buying players is simple enough, but there's only rudimentary indications of what to bid, so it's trial and error at the start. You can take out loans and the rates are rather generous, so loaning half a million to bolster your transfer budget is a viable option at the beginning. The first game has no advanced tactics. Pick your lineup and put your players in. Players do not have an actual position, but rather have skills in different areas. The manual doesn't go into detail about this, but it seems straightforward enough. Tackling for defenders, passing for midfielders, shooting for forwards. Skills in secondary areas probably help, but who knows. Premier Manager was a great game. It was simple, but not simple enough that it was too easy. You could play through seasons fast if you wanted. It was all great fun and it was exciting for fans of the genre as Premier Manager and Championship Manager went head to head in a rivalry that would raise the level of management games to previously unfathomable heights. So how did I do at it? With all the injuries, I'm having a difficult time in the league, but managed to claw my way back to 11th place in the conference. It's not enough though, I get sacked after one season and move on to the next game. The speed, the playability and the fun led to good reviews for Premier Manager, averaging 80+. Plus. One year later, Realms of Fantasy and Gremlin were ready to release Premier Manager 2. Championship Manager 93 had stepped up the competition with real player names, but Premier Manager was well up to the challenge. The second game is very similar in style and user interface to the first, but improves some aspects of it. There are more options when it comes to tactics and players have an additional skill, control. They also have a preferred foot. Transfers are still somewhat of a crapshoot, but eventually you'll develop a sense of what it takes to sign someone. It's a good idea to look for out of contract players still at clubs because you can sign them without the club fee. The business side is still paramount to success and you still have to put a lot of time into sponsors and into balancing your staff budget. Finding and signing staff is easy enough, but if you're not careful, you'll end up bleeding cash fast with overly expensive staff. As with the first game, you start in the conference and you have to work your way up. Injuries are better balanced this time around, and this makes it easier to balance your squad. 
you still have to reset training every time someone comes back from injury which is tedious and unnecessary. If you forget to set training, skills drop much faster than you can train them back up. The improvement in tactics includes setting your style of play more thoroughly than in the first game. I went for a classic British long ball style and it seemed to work very well. With a majestic win streak at the end of the season, I managed to win the conference and get promoted while staying just inside my overdraft limit. There are some cheats in the game accessed by dialing specific numbers on the phone. One of the numbers is a slot machine that gives you different boosts like more money, stats boosted to 99 and so forth. When you use the cheats, your name changes to Bandit Cheat. To me the cheats break the game, where's the fun of having a whole team of 99s? There's no fun in trying to extend contracts of all 99 players on a conference team budget either. Although very similar to the first game, this feels more solid and your actions feel like they have an impact. There are a lot of things to tweak for your team and your organization and it always feels like you're in control. This is my favorite Premier Manager game. To me, this has the best balance between options, speed and fun. Premier Manager 2 averaged about the same as the first game, around 82, which is slightly better treatment than Championship Manager 93 got in the press. Among players though, Champman was quickly gaining support. Gremlin kept the pace up with a game every year and released Premier Manager 3 in 1994. While Championship Manager only got data updates in a localized Italian version, while Sports Interactive worked on Championship Manager 2. For the first two games, Pat Phelan did the music, but for the third game, another legendary Gremlin composer, Neil Biggin, took over. I love the music for all three games. The third installment of Premier Manager added a graphical match display with visible players on the pitch, although they were not animated and only moved around the pitch like stickmen. It also had a revamped transfer system that was a lot easier to use than the old one. Transfers now had several faces and between faces you could see the teams and players reactions to the different parts of the bid. The game also lets you use the phone to call the other teams in the league system to make bids on their players, and that's a nice addition, but with the ability to pick up players without contract for free, this becomes almost a cheat. My favorite new feature in Premier Manager 3 was the new tactic system, with a zone-based formation editor much like other games of the time had. Combined with the ability to give your players detailed instructions for every position, this made for a powerful tactical tool. It was possible to exploit a little, if you weren't playing fair. The individual instructions included setting passing length and rate of passing to dribbling and the likes. The new match display is decidedly fancier than the displays from the first two games, but it is also noticeably slower even on the fastest setting. The stiff little men on the pitch get in the way of the ball too and makes the flow of the game kind of hard to follow. It is possible to display players' numbers instead, but I like to turn them off altogether and just watch the movement on the ball, because it's a lot easier to follow, and the player in possession is still highlighted in the lineup. When picking your team, you now have the option of picking a used-up Halifax Town that includes the makers of the game, John Atkinson and Alex Kevin, as overpowered conference players. Mr. Atkinson scores almost one goal per game, but always gets long injuries and long bans, so it evens out. My Halifax Town was shaky at first, but using the new tactics editor I managed to create a modern 4-2-3-1 tactic that worked okay after a little tweaking. I almost got back to the top of the league by the end of the first season. This is a great game, and the improvements puts it right at the top of the managerial mountain at the time of its release. But I still prefer Premier Manager 2, cause it's simpler and faster to play. Reviews for the game was almost on level with the previous games, but it lacked the 90 plus reviews that the second game got. 
With Gremlin putting faith and resources into their extra sports series that featured a range of 3D sports titles like Actua Soccer, Actua Tennis and Actua Ice Hockey, Premier Manager 3 marked the end of Premier Manager on the Amiga, except for a deluxe version released in 1995. The deluxe version included updated data and a data editor called the Multi-Edit System. The Amiga market was dwindling by this time and Gremlin focused on other platforms. John Atkinson left Gremlin to work on Codemasters LMA Manager series that had a decent fan base on the PlayStation and even made an attempt at the PC market with LMA Professional Manager in 2005. Next up for Gremlin was the integration of Premier Manager into the Actua Sports series with Premier Manager 97. The PlayStation version of Premier Manager 97 still uses the Premier Manager 2 engine, but for the PC version they decided to turn to a tried and tested product that never had an English translation before. Spanish Dynamics PC Football Series PC Football was the biggest football manager series in the Spanish speaking part of the world, with good sales. And for Premier Manager 97, Gremlin and Dynamic used PC Football 5. It's a good game in its own right. The UI is crisp and easy to understand and the match engine is decent even if it has some weirdness to it like the strikers having no sense of direction and always finishing from outside the area even if they are through on goal. The transfer system has unnecessary limitations like one bid a week and your bids are not adjustable. You can choose to start the game in a lower division like the older games in Pro Manager mode but there is also an alternate manager mode that lets you start with any club of your choosing in the English league system. There are some bugs in this and for that reason it can be frustrating to play at times. The 98 version is just an updated 97 version with bug fixes and new data. It still uses the PC Football 5 engine. Premier Manager 99 switches to the PC Football 6 match engine and adds a few options here and there, like making the game modes more flexible. It has a nice option for viewing the games in an overhead view with goals replayed in the 3D engine. It's the best of the dynamic Premier Manager games for sure, but as a gaming experience it doesn't really measure up to the joy of the John Atkinson games. Gremlin used the actual soccer engine to display highlights on the N64 and the PlayStation versions, but I suspect the matches are not really played out in the actual soccer engine, it's just used for highlights. There is as far as I know no option to watch the whole game, like there is in the PC version. In 1999 Gremlin was bought up by Infogrames and Premier Manager 99 would be the final game in the series published by Gremlin. Infogrames stepped away from the dynamic games and Premier Manager kept going in a largely forgettable budget variation for another decade. Dynamics PC Football 2000 was instead published in English as Euroleague Football. After initially ending with PC Football 2001, the PC Football series has been revived a few times, most recently with parts of the old team creating Football Club Simulator, which is on Steam, currently as Football Club Simulator 20. So far the yearly updates has come free for owners of previous version, which is a nice departure from bigger companies' habits of charging full price for what is more or less reskins. It's a decent simple footy manager with plenty of nods to the classic PC football series and the 3D engine gets better every year. Premier Manager was a great series and in many respects and in many gamers hearts it kept up an even race with Championship Manager for a few years. It would have been interesting to see the game really take the John Atkinson management engine into the future by marrying it to the Actua Soccer engine, also on the PC. The dynamic games were good, but they just didn't feel fully like Premier Manager games. Who knows if we will ever see a new Premier Manager game again. Original Gremlin owner Ian Stewart still owns the rights to the Premier Manager series and in an interview with the Retro Hour podcast he mentions that under the right circumstances a reboot would be possible. While we wait, we still have some great classics to replay.